Hello, my name is Peter Ashkai. I am from the Department of Mechanical Engineering of the University of Victoria in Canada. And my co-authors are from the same university as well as from Laval University. I'm going to talk about the passively oscillating foil used for energy harvesting. And the passively oscillating foil concept involves um, a NACA foil that can undergo a combination of the heaving and pitching motion. And in our previous studies, we considered that all the parameters uh, involving the stiffness and damping on both degrees of freedom, as well as the, uh, the imbalance, the distance between the uh, pitching axis and the center of mass of the foil, uh, all these values parameters have a substantial impact on the oscillation that this foil takes, whether it's periodic or not, what the amplitude and frequency will be, etc. In this particular study, we're going to pick one case where we fix all of these parameters and vary the flow conditions. We want to investigate the response of these passively oscillating foils uh, to the disturbances to the inflow. Uh, in particular, we will use three types of disturbances. Uh, one is the incoming periodic vortices that this foil will encounter, the tripping of the boundary layer on the surface of the foil itself, as well as the variation of the free stream turbulence levels. This is a schematic of our experimental system. The foil uh, NACA0015 was positioned vertically in the water tunnel and we used a combination of position tracking both in pitch and heave and particle image velocimetry PIV to look at the dynamic response of the foil and the associated flow patterns. Um, this is the uh, top view of the experimental apparatus mounted on top of the water tunnel. The foil is visible right here. The flow is from right to left. And you can see the springs that were used to provide the stiffness into the heave direction. Uh, there were encoders, both in pitch and heave, that were measuring the kinematic response. And we also uh, used the magnetic brake uh, on the system that uh, simulated the power takeoff, so we could measure the power produced by the foil. So the first type of the disturbance that we investigated involved periodically uh, shed vortices. So this is the foil of interest. This is the passively oscillating foil. It was positioned in the wake of an identical foil that was undergoing a prescribed motion, so prescribed combination of pitch and heave. And the, the vortices generated by this upstream foil were interacting with the, the passive one. This uh, figure shows instantaneous vorticity contours uh, in the region between the foils. So the upstream foil is indicated here, and it sheds positive and negative vortices that are uh, translated, convected downstream and impinge uh, or interact with the passive foil. The double arrow here indicates the window span uh, by the heaving of the downstream foil. The foil itself is just outside of the, uh, the shown area here. And of course, the flow is from right to left on all of this, in all of these images. These uh, four plots show uh, different phases of the foil oscillation cycle. The uh, response of the passive foil is shown on this slide. The uh, plot on the left shows the uh, amplitudes of the pitch and heave in red and blue symbols as a function of the reduced frequency of the upstream foil. The black symbols show the uh, power coefficient. As can be expected, the foil is operating in the wake of another object, the upstream foil. So it, in average sense, it experiences a velocity deficit. So we can expect uh, a nominal reduction in performance compared to a reference case of just foil oscillating in the free stream. And that was indeed the case. However, um, in if we account for um, the 
incident time averaged velocity experienced by the foil. Then the foil operated in the wake actually showed some performance improvement compared to the case of equivalent free stream velocity. But um, in the uh, specific cases where we varied the uh, reduced frequency, um, you can see that the improved performance uh, when the foil would uh, productively interact with the incoming vortices so that the resulting flow patterns would induce larger amplitude heaving motion because that's largely what's what contributed to the power uh, generation. Um, this occurred only in a very narrow range of the reduced frequencies. So in particular in this case you can see the uh, power uh, generation was higher than in, uh, than in other regimes and the time traces of the heave and pitch amplitudes which are shown on the right here you can see that they are highly periodic and generally synchronized with each other again these were not prescribed these the passively foil um, so to speak selected this oscillation regime uh, by itself in response to the the incoming flow conditions but if we varied the reduced frequency of the incoming vortices so the, the the reduced frequency of the upstream foil which produced the the apparent inflow conditions for the uh, the passive foil just slightly and consider uh, this symbol uh, in the power curve right here you can see that the response of the passive foil is much more chaotic there are these uh, regions where it would go into the quasi periodic oscillations for a while and then the synchronization between pitch and heave would break down and it would not produce much power and then it would try to synchronize again etc so that's uh, that's the response to periodic vortices uh, we also looked at the uh, response to tripping the boundary layer on the passive foil itself um, we applied sandpaper uh, a, a strip of sandpaper along the span of the foil and effectively um, accelerated transition of the boundary layer into a turbulent regime. The, in our previous studies, we found that the leading edge vortices are uh, primarily responsible uh, both for generation of the lift and the uh, reversal of the pitch and heave motion. Um, it's the, the timing of shading of those leading edge vortices is crucial. So we were wondering what the effect of the uh, tripping of the boundary layers would be. And we can see here in terms of the amplitudes of the heave and pitch as a function of um, time over the oscillation period, the effect was minimal. In fact, we also performed PIV and uh, confirmed that the wake, uh, regardless of the Reynolds number and whether the boundary layers were tripped or not, were uh, turbulent uh, over majority of the oscillation cycle. Uh, this uh, looks like a negative result, although this is um, encouraging in terms of validity of scaled experiments. In, um, in experiments, it's often impossible to match the Reynolds numbers of the full-scale uh, oscillating foil turbines and uh, therefore there is um, an, an underlying uncertainty on whether the uh, dynamics of the wake would be faithfully reproduced in scale experiments and this is uh, uh, the lack of dependence on the uh, turbulent laminar regime in the boundary layers is, uh, is an argument in favor of validity of scaled experiments. Uh, finally, we looked at the effects of the free stream turbulence on the performance of the passively oscillated foil. We used fractal grids, uh, two of them uh, with different uh, scale levels and also positioned at different uh, distances upstream of the oscillating turbine. Um, this cases, combination of different grids and different distances produced this flow conditions. Uh, the, these are instantaneous plots of uh, velocity fluctuations mm, just upstream of the turbine. And the uh, plot in the upper left shows the reference case of no grid. Um, the, uh, these two uh, plots on the upper 
right and lower left show moderate levels of turbulent intensity and this is a higher level of turbulent intensity um, considering those cases which are summarized in this table here the moderate turbulent intensity increases of about 10 percent uh, resulted in increases of power generation while the substantially higher turbulence uh, resulted in a decrease of power generation. We can only hypothesize of what is happening in terms of the flow physics there. Now, we think that the moderate increase of incoming turbulence um, delays shedding of the leading edge vortices by increasing the momentum transfer into the boundary layers and stabilizing them through the oscillation cycle. While the larger scale oscillations associated with the higher turbulence levels uh, destabilized vortices as they already shed uh, into the wake and interfere with stable lift generation which is needed for large scale large uh, heave amplitudes that are associated with high uh, power generation so in conclusion uh, we can say that the incoming periodic vortices can have uh, a beneficial effect on the performance of uh, passively oscillating hydrokinetic turbines, but only in the narrow uh, range of the reduced frequencies. Um, this potentially has a positive practical implication that in the arrays of such turbines, performance of the downstream blades would not be significantly affected by changes in the reduced frequency uh, in the upstream rows of turbines. Um, on the other hand, surface roughness uh, did not significantly affect performance of the passively oscillating foils. And in terms of the turbulence, in coming turbulence levels, moderate increase has beneficial effect. With that, uh, I would like to thank you for your attention.